Hare Krishna. Uh, welcome to this uh, one another episode of uh, Gudev Ki Madhur Smritiya. Today uh, we'll start with a Jai Dhvani. Jai Shri Guru Gaurang Gandharvika Dridhari Shri Radha Vinod Bihari Ji Ki Jai. Shri Radha Ramana Ji Ki Jai. Nitalila Pravishto Om Vishnu Pada Shtota Sar Shri Man Bhakti Vedam Shri Narayan Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Nitalila Pravishto Om Vishnu Pada Shtota Sar Shri Man Bhakti Vedam Shri Narayan Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Nitalila Pravishto Om Vishnu Pada Shtota Sar Shri Man Bhakti Vedam Shri Tivikram Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Nitalila Pravishto Om Vishnu Pada Shtota Sar Shri Man Bhakti Vedam Shri Swami Ji Maharaj Ki Jai. Nitalila Pravishto Om Vishnu Pada Shtota Sar Shri Man Bhakti Pagyan Kesha Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. नित्यलीला प्रश्नों में श्रुपाद अष्टोद सशिमन भक्ति सिद्धान सरस्वती गोस्वामी ग्रहुपाद की जाए रूपान गुरुवर की जाए वृंदावन अवधी धाम की जाए अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वंद की जाए संवेद गौर भक्त वंद की जाए विनाम संकीर्तन की जाए ब्रजनाथ प्रभु की जाए वृंदा देवी की जाए जगन्नाथ प्रभु की जाए गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बो टुडे वी आर वेरी ऑनर्ड टू हैव वेरी एग्जाल्टेड डिवोटीज विद अस ब्रजनाथ प्रभु एंड हिज वाइफ वृंदा देवी Who have uh, who have always been with Gurudev from 1992, and just like a shadow, wherever Gurudev went, they were all there. So today we are going to hear their experiences and what all leelas Gurudev did with them. We we'll start with the kirtan first, and after kirtan we'll uh, hear from them. So we can start with the kirtan. Um, maybe Ramadan we can do the kirtan. Sorry. कवे मोर हबे है नदीना बीमाल वैष्णवे रतियुपजीबे वासना होई बेक्षीना बीमाल वैष्णवे रतियुपजीबे वासना होई बेक्षीना हरि हरि कवे मोर हबे हेनो दीना अंतरे बाहिरे समव्यवहार अमानी मान दहाव कृष्ण संकीर्तने श्री कृष्ण स्मरणे सतत मजिया रव हरि हरि कवे मोर हबे हेनो दीना ए देह र क्रिया अभ्यास करीब जीवन जापन लागी श्री कृष्ण भजने अनुकूल जहा ताहे हब अनुरागी हरि हरि कवे मोर हबे हेनो दीना भजन रहा प्रतिकूल धीर भावे त्यागी वो भजिते भजिते समय आशीले 
दे दे हचारिया दे वो हरि हरि कावे मोर हावे है नो दीना भक्ति विनोद आशा करी बसिया गोद्रुम प्रभु कृपा लगी व्याकुल सदा कंदे संगो पाने सदा कंदे संगो पाने हरि हरि कवे मोर हवे है नो दीना बीमाला वैष्णव राती उपजीबे बीमाला वैष्णव राती उपजीबे बासन होई बेक्षीना बासन होई बेक्षीना जय वैष्णव ठाकुर जय वैष्णव ठाकुर वैष्णव ठाकुर जय वैष्णव ठाकुर जय गुरुदेवा जय गुरुदेवा श्रीला नारायण गोस्वामी जय गुरुदेवा थैंक यू रावण प्रभु थैंक यू सो ब्यूटीफुल नाइस टू हियर योर वॉइस सो टुडे वी हैव अ वेरी डिस्टिंग्विश्ड devotee is with us bradnath prabhu and his wife anda devi they need no introduction everybody in the sangha knows them he was always with gurudev wherever gurudev went they were together with them uh, still i will say something about them uh, they met gurudev in 1992 for the first time and even immediately thereafter they surrendered themselves with all their belongings and whatever they had totally 100% into gurudev lotus feet and then stayed with him forever never went back to their home country holland and even now they are serving with their whole heart and all their endeavors avanda devi is also looking after all parikramas all accommodation is looked after by her uh, both the parikramas for so many years so we are very honored uh, to have them here today and we want to hear from them lot of things uh about gurudev because they know everything they always been with him everywhere all over the uh, globe wherever gurudev went they were like a shadow with him so if anybody knows about gurudev it is them who knows who know the most about gurudev so prabhu ji and didi you can start who sir wants to start first uh with how you met gurudev how life took you from holland to vrindavan and then how you stayed back here forever and how he how gurudev captured your hearts and uh, uh, how various leelas he did with you you are very eager to hear everything sorry i think you are muted wait sorry can you unmute yourself prabhu ji yes no i am not okay thank you ajay prabhu for organizing this nice harikata festival about the glory of shri gurudev i am uh, honored to be with all of you i am not a liberated soul but i was lucky to be in the association of shri gurudev for many years also brinda so we have received some mercy some blessings <coughs> we want to share something with you today agyanati merandasya jananjana salakya takshuru miritam mena tasmay shri gurudev namaha mukam karoti vachalam angum langayate girim yat kripa tamaham bande Shri Guru Dinatari Ne Guru Ve Gaura Chandra Ne Radhika Ye Tadala Ye Krishna Ye Krishna Bhakta Ye Tadabhakta Ye Namo Namaha 
Sri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Sayam Rupakadamayam Dharati Svakadantika Naham Bande Tavacharanayar Dvandvama Dvandvahetu Om Vipakam Gurum Apihari Narakam Nathanetu Ramya Rama Mardutanuratanam Dane Nabirastum Bave Bave Ridaya Bavane Bavaye Yam Bavantum Tasya Apara Rasa Saravilasa Murti Ananda Kandam Paramatta Sokya Lakshmi Brahma Diduravam Gakir Brisadvanu Jayo Kaimpariyam eva mama jannani jannanisya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadhadha Sri Vasari Sri Gauravakta Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Vancha Kalpa Tarupyasya Kripa Sindhu Evacha Patitana Bhavane Pyo Vaishnava Pyo Namona Maha So Ajay Prabhu is requesting us to speak something how we met Gurudev and what happened, what we experienced. Vijay, can you be a little louder? I think the voice is a little low. Or maybe you come close a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Yes, Ajay, Prabhu, Ajay Prabhu is asking us to share a little bit how we met Srila Gurudev and what happened after that, what are important moments, experiences for ourselves, myself and Vrinda as persons. Yeah. Is this clear enough? Yes, now it's fine. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay, good, good, good. So we were lucky in this life, although born in what is called Malachya Desh, yeah, lowest place of the earth, under the sea level even. But they have called it Holy Land. I, I was hearing the lecture and he said it is the Holy Land. Cows everywhere. So you can't call it that way. <laughs> well, at the time that we took birth, that was not yet holy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cow. And there was holes, a lot of holes, I can tell you. Yeah. Hello. Below sea level, there we took birth, and from young age, I think Brenda had also that inspiration. I was always fascinated with what is it that we call God. It was for me like a fascination, and I wanted to know who loves God. I want to also learn how to love God. So after a lot of disappointments in the world of struggle, material strife. Finally, I decided to make a very serious attempt to pray to God and to ask for help. That time, he sent me Bhagavad Gita from Srila Prabhupada. And after some years, I was ready to join these crazy Hare Krishnas. Yeah. <laughs> In the beginning, I did not really think I should do that, but after reading again and again Bhagavad Gita and Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada explains how we cannot become a pure devotee of Krishna unless we associate with pure devotees. So then I thought um, maybe there are pure devotees amongst these monks yeah, who are followers of Krishna. So I should surrender and join them. And that was a very nice experience for many years. <clears throat> we stayed in the institution that Srila Prabhupada introduced from India. Actually, this is the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition. But Srila Prabhupada gave such a nice, uh, such a nice outline and, and, and package and, and program that we felt like we were engaged 24 hours a day chanting, distributing books, going out on the streets and uh, recruiting new people and making buildings.
buildings, temples everywhere. It was a very nice experience. <clears throat> but there was no, or what is it, inner, what I felt, satisfaction that there were really pure devotees that I had full faith in, except for Srila Prabhupada. That was our strength throughout the years. We, although we received initiation, but the gurus themselves gave up the process of bhakti because it was not really so easy for them to be guru. Yeah. Unless you are a pure devotee, just don't venture in that area. Yeah. <laughs> that is the advisable scriptures. And especially yeah, if we see the behavior and character of such great souls like Srila Prabhupada, who simply considered himself the servant of the servant of the servant and simply bring the good news. So Srila Prabhupada kept us going and he came more and more you know, manifested in our heart, although we never met him personally. I can say that I, but um, I saw his picture from the beginning when the first time I received Bhagavad Gita, it was in 1974. And I saw the picture of Srila Prabhupada on the back of the Bhagavad Gita. And he was like chanting and smiling in such a happy mood. Then my heart said, I want to have the same mood that this personality has. I want to become happy like him. Yeah, always absorbed in loving God. So Srila Prabhupada entered our hearts and I can just, for that reason also, encourage all devotees, just meditate on pure devotees. Yeah, they may be physically present or not, but they will enter our hearts. It is guaranteed because they are not mortal beings, conditioned souls. They are beyond matter. They can enter the heart of all living entities, even the beautiful prayer yeah, of Sri Sutta Goswami is there. Yeah, that, that transcendental personality, he is able to enter the hearts of all living entities. So especially hearing the glories of Srila Prabhupada, it made such a impact upon my <coughs> heart and also Vrindas that we decided that whatever happens the rest of our life, we simply take shelter with Srila Prabhupada. And when it comes to initiation, we'll just wait till next life. Then <laughs> or a hundred lives, I am ready to wait, but I'm not gonna go for you know, someone who is not a pure devotee because it doesn't work. Yeah. So here we go. And then lo and behold, yeah, what manifested, which was like unbelievable because we heard all the time there will never ever be anyone like Srila Prabhupada. There, he was the last one, the only one like Jesus, you know, whatever they wanted to tell us. So better you take initiation from us, but I did not agree and neither did Vrinda. So then we heard the glories of Srila Gurudev, how he was helping the devotees in ISKCON from beginning after Srila Prabhupada and even before that, we heard his glories, how he was connected with Srila Prabhupada from 1946 and how he was helping ISKCON through so many difficulties and how he was teaching the leaders, the gurus in ISKCON, what is bhakti, especially what is Raganuga bhakti, what is proper bhajan. And uh, the most amazing thing was when I was hearing his glories and reading his teachings, which manifested time to time in the journals in ISKCON. And then I found out that he doesn't give initiation. Then I felt overjoyed. I thought, oh, this is, I feel safe with such a person who doesn't run after followers, yeah, who simply wants to help everyone like a friend. That was Gurudev's mood. So in my heart, I was praying, I hope I will meet him very soon. And, but I did never tell anything to Vrinda because I did not want to convince her about my own internal yeah, meditation. But it happened so that by Krishna's arrangement and especially the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, we both were able to meet Srila Gurudev in a very beautiful environment and circumstances. And that was in 1992 in Rup Sanatan Gaudiya Mat. We met Srila Gurudev. We were just five, six of us. And he was sitting in the room. 
and we were invited by a very nice devotee who knew Srila Gurudev. And she told us, I want you to meet someone who is just like Prabhupada. Yeah. She saw us when we were in Radha Damada during Kartik festival and there were the glories of Srila Prabhupada. They were shared by the devotees who were with us on Parikrama. And then we were very moved because what Prabhupada did is like, it's a miracle and he is really the Acharya for all Western devotees, but also Indian devotees. Uh, he made a platform and he said, yeah, such a beautiful uh, structure for helping and organizing the teachings of Mahaprabhu to become available to all living entities. Uh, only a little fine tuning is necessary and Gurudev, I will hopefully share that with you. He provided that fine tuning in such an amazing way that uh, <clears throat> if we can remember that, then our life will be successful. And what to speak, if we can meditate and contemplate how we can fulfill that beautiful desire of Srila Gurudev, which is non different from the desire of Srila Prabhupada. So, meeting Srila Gurudev in Radha in Arup Sanat and yeah, in 1992 in September. So I want to ask Vrinda to share a little bit what happened when we met Gurudev. Yeah. Do you remember Vrinda? Uh, yeah, when uh, we came into Rupsanat Gaudiya, Gaudiya Mat, uh, in 1987. I heard his first um, discussion in, in public that was on the disappearance day of Srila Prabhupada. And I was there because I was in ISKCON at that time, also doing Brajmandal Parikrama with Lokanath Swami at that time. And then when I heard Gurudev uh, speaking amongst all the exalted uh, speakers who were invited there, like Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj, Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Maharaj, uh, Bhakti Jivan Jana, so many were there. But a very nice thing is a good day spoke in English, which was very good. And then I made so many notes. It was talking about how he met Srila Prabhupada and Radha Damodar, how they exchanged things, how they were making japatis and all these things. And, uh, and I was so fascinated. Wow, there's someone who knew Prabhupada even before Prabhupada came to the West. So I made so many notes and then I sent those notes to Brajinath Prabhu, who was in Holland at that time. And then later I found that, much later I found my notes in 94, after we actually took initiation for Gurudev. And then I realized, my goodness, that's the same. Narayan Raj, I took initiation from later on, I totally forgot about those notes. Uh, but then later I also met Srila Gurudev during the party crowds. Uh, when we stayed in Mathura with Brajamando Parikram, Lokanath Samis. And then we also met Gurudev in the Mat, Keshavji Gaudi Mat, a few times. And I was just so fascinated by Shira Gurudev. But then, as he said in 92, that was our first um, private darsha with Shira Gurudev. We were only four people, five people. We were there. And um, I remember when Gurudev uh, asked Prabhu, uh, so, who are you? What is your name? What are you doing? What is your service? So then we gave a whole list of what we did at that time, because at that time he was uh, president of the Amsterdam Temple. Because you, yeah, 92, we still are not used to it. No, I think. Anyway, and then we did Food for Life and we did Namhata and book distribution and, and on and on and on. So then uh, and then Gurudev was asking Prabhu, so what is the reason why Mahaprabhu came? <coughs> so then he gave some answers. And what did you answer? Well, first of all, Gurudev, when he asked me, what, who are you and what are you doing? Mm -hmm. but then, like Brinda said, I gave the whole list. And then Gurudev said, he looked at me and he said to me, first, you, you become Krishna conscious, he said. And then you have... <laughs> <laughs> so that was like for me when Gurudev said that it made of me upon my heart such a strong impression like an arrow you know although we read it in the scriptures and we hear it from so many people become Krishna conscious and 
But when Gurudev said it, it was like piercing my heart and I felt like, wow, I'm going to follow this saintly person, even if I never meet him again, but I'm going to follow his advice and become first Krishna conscious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I will try to meet him again. That was my firm conviction. I will do everything to meet him again and become his student. Yeah. I was not thinking about initiation because I knew I heard that he did not give initiation. And then I felt like this instruction or this advice that Gurudev gave, first become Krishna conscious. It is um, with me every day actually, because still I'm not Krishna conscious. But I see that by meditating upon this advice, this instruction, it keeps me in the morning, especially, and in the evening, very nicely connected with Srila Gurudev and with the conceptions that he is, has implanted within my heart and he is giving to all of us in his beautiful teachings. But the impressions that I receive from him, I'm still receiving more and more. That helps me to really meditate. This is the first and foremost instruction that I need in my life to always remember I should become Krishna conscious because I am Badajiv, I am not liberated soul. Yeah. So it is essential. And as much as I develop in my own Krishna consciousness, I realize that more and more I can give a little encouragement to others. But other than that, I should not in any yeah ID have any idea that oh I I am Krishna conscious. Yeah, I need to always remind myself. And it is such a beautiful process because I notice that. If I look back 40 years, I think now almost 40 years Thank that we you. met Srila Gurudev. And where I am now, 92, not 30 years? Yeah, 30 years, yeah, 29 years. Where I am now, then I see that although at the time that I met Gurudev, I was completely in Maya. Now I have some better idea yeah. <laughs> what is. Yeah, my position, some improvement is there. I can definitely see that by Gurudev's mercy. And I'm very happy because it is such a nice process to become more and more Krishna conscious. And Gurudev said the final, that is what he shared with all of us, but he said the final completion of all our endeavors to make progress in bhakti, what we call diksha or initiation, it will take place, he said, when we take birth in the Prakat Lila of Radha and Krishna. Then final examination, he said, final training, and then we will be Krishna conscious. Yeah. So that teaching that Gurudev gave at that time, it is such a beautiful duo for me. Yeah. But now wants to share something. And also what he explained was uh, the last slok of Upadesha Vita. Do you remember that? When we were in our last meet, uh, first meeting with him, he was explaining this slok. Not the last slok, the eighth slok. The eighth slok, sorry. Sanama rupa charitari sukirtanana smritya kramena rasanama nasini yoga. Tistan brajeda danuragi yananagami kalam nayat iti upadesha saram. Srila Gurudev explained this beautiful prayer to us. And he also explained, yeah. Aradhyo Bhagavan Brajesa Taniya Tradhama Vrindavanam Ramyakasti Tupasana Brajivagur Yakbargena Yakalpitama Srimad Bhagavatam Ramadam Amalam Prema Kumar Kamalam Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matamidam Tatradeyo Naparaha. This prayer, and he also explained yeah, very nicely Anarpita Charin Chirat Karuni Avatena Kalao. Sarmat paritum unata uchvala rasam svabhakti sriyam. Hari purata sundara duti kadamba sandhiti praha. Sadari daye kandares puratu vasa chinamana. These three prayers Gurudev sat to share with us. He asked us why did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu come? And then we replied to distribute the holy names. And then he said, <laughs> he was laughing. You replied, I didn't do that. I said that, yeah, <laughs> Trina was a little shy. But anyhow, that was what we understood. And it is true. 
But Guru Dev started laughing and he said, oh, oh, okay, he said. And then he explained, there is much more. Yeah, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there is a very deep reason why he came. And he came really to relish the Prem Rasa, Niri Rasa, Korete Ashvadan. And he came to distribute something that is called Raga Marga Bhakti Loka Korete Pracharan. Not only that, he said he is the most magnanimous, most merciful manifestation yeah, that has ever appeared. He has come to distribute for free yeah, what has never ever been distributed before since a long, long time. That is the beauty of the service of Radha and Krishna's yeah, conjugal Kunja Seva, yeah, that is Manjari Vava. So when Gurudev explained all these things, he then we were like, the ears were like, wow, I was thinking that I have never heard these things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we were left with such a beautiful impression. And after that, um, I think we uh, I had to go back to Europe. Because yeah, we both went. Both went back. But we, I made a firm decision to connect, keep connected with Shira Gurudev. So we continue to hear and see who are related with Srila Gurudev. We met the devotees in England and we helped a little bit with book printing. And these bu books are so valuable, I tell you, Nectar of Govinda Lila and Bhakti Rasayan and Going Beyond Vaikuntha. These are the lectures that Srila Gurudev spoke on Brihad Bhagavatamrita. And they're so amazing and so valuable. When we, when I read those lectures, I felt like, wow, I never <laughs> read such beautiful descriptions. How sweet is Krishna? And of course, we all know that what Gurudev came to give, that when we have to go ahead, but that will happen. But I, I think that, you know, many devotees have interviewed me. And once I start, then it will take hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and, hours and yeah because there is so much to share. But really, <clears throat> we all heard when Srila Gurudev came <coughs> to Western countries. No, don't skip too much. No, initiation, maybe three. OK, from now on. keep a check on you. <laughs> Just keep the sequence, otherwise you jump. No, but I want to share something which is very valuable, which yes. is essential for everyone, because when Gurudev came to Western countries, then many devotees said, oh, there is a difference between you and Srila Prabhupada. And Gurudev said, yeah, you may think like that. He had brown eyes, I have blue eyes. He said, <laughs> yeah. uh, he doesn't have a beard, I have a beard, he said. And he says, always remember Krishna. He I said, always have... remember Krishna. And I say, never forget Krishna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, Gurudev said, one thing you should know. And if you can understand this, then you understand that there is no difference between me and Srila Prabhupada. He said, your Srila Prabhupada came and he taught you that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And I'm telling you, you should forget this. Yeah. If you can understand this, Gurudev said, then you understand really yeah, that there is no difference between me and Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada published the Nectar or the Krishna book. And in that Krishna book, he beautifully describes the pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan. But everywhere he mentions the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Supreme Person, Supreme Personality. But Gurudev, he, so not, he, had he had to establish that. Yeah, Gurudev said, when you want to become expert in playing the piano, first you have to learn how to use all the different, what is it? Keys. 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 But he said, but once you, you've learned that, you don't need to worry about it anymore. It comes automatically. So he said, in the beginning, you have to learn that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. But after some time, Forget it, he says. <laughs> so in his books, Srila Gurudev is so sweetly narrating how there is Aishwarya and Madhurya, yeah, two types of pastimes of Krishna. And Brajalila is full of Madhurya. There Krishna is no in any way, even if he tries to tell anyone that he is the Supreme Personality of God, that nobody believes him. <coughs> even if gops and gopis try to remind Nanda Baba, Yasoda Maya, that your son is actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They say, yeah, you may think 
and him, but he is more than anything, he's our son. You can tell me anything, but God doesn't lie. He doesn't steal. He doesn't do all these things. So really, he is our son. Yeah. So like that, Gurudev made that very, very clear. So after one year, associating with the devotees, again, we made it to Braj. And still we were quite active in ISKCON. Yeah. And I did not tell anything to Vrinda even that I wanted to take full shelter with Srila Gurudev. I felt that it should be her own decision. But luckily, when I arrived in Braj and Vrinda had gone ahead of me a few weeks, I found out that she was already in Mathura, although she was officially meant to be in the Parikram at ISKCON, but somehow or other she had landed in Mathura with Srila Gurudev. And... She's ahead of you all the time. Yeah, always ahead. <laughs> You're catching up with her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. So what happened then, Vrinda? What happened? No, I don't know. Yet. How did you? Yeah, I want to say one thing about your coming to Gurudev. Uh, is uh, is that you had in your heart desire to look for a pure devotee? Even Gurudev had a desire. He was looking for a pure uh, disciple like you, because before you came, I heard once I was sitting with him in Mathura, and that time he uh, he was just starting to get very busy, you know, uh, going everywhere. So he said, oh, I need a person who can look after all my affairs, my tickets and travel. I can't do so much. I just heard him say that. And within one month, you appeared from somewhere. I don't know how. <laughs> he just wanted a person like you and you appeared. <laughs> Actually, that will happen. I will tell you what happened. Yeah. Okay. Brenda wants me to continue. Yes, Brenda. So, 1993, I came to India and I had a strong desire to to meet with Srila Gurudev and just take shelter. I did not think about initiation. I just felt I want to just become a student and learn about pure bhakti because that was always on my heart. What is pure bhakti? There is so many types of religion and so many types even of bhakti, but pure bhakti is really, I think the conclusion of all types of bhakti. I didn't know what it was, but I wanted it. Yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> Here I come to Vrindavan and I heard that Vrinda is in Mathura. So the first thing I do is at once go to Mathura. Yeah. And uh, I, I had been in Mathura maybe once in my previous visits to India. So I thought Mathura is not so far and uh, let me find out how to get there. And um, what is the cheapest way? Because we are, you know, when you're born in Holland, you turn every cent before you spend it. Yeah. So I thought, what is the cheapest way? So I found a Tonga by Tonga, yeah. a small horse pulling like a little cart. And uh, so here I was on the Tonga and it took so long, but all the time I was praying, oh, I thought it was closer, but anyhow, we're progressing. And then the horse had to drink something and eat something. And then anyhow, finally we arrived in Matura. I arrived there. I came to the mat and I asked the devotees there, is, are there any Western ladies here? Yes. Is Silana Reinmaras here? Yes. So then I went to look for Vrinda and I saw Vrinda was in one room with eight ladies, yeah. a small room. And there were four boys also. There was a curtain in the middle. It was not a very big room. And uh, I saw all were smiling and I thought this is unbelievable. Eight ladies in one room and all are happy. <laughs> Normally ladies need their private rooms. Yeah. So I thought, I don't know what's going on here, but something magic is here. I felt the atmosphere was so thick and so much permitted with a very special fragrance. So when I asked Linda, how are you? She said, I'm very happy. Yeah. And, and I became so happy. So I went to see Srila Gurudev. And then I asked him uh, that oh, I'm so thankful that you look after Vrinda. Yeah, that time she had another name and Gurudev was smiling. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was exchanging a little bit with him. And then I felt in my heart, oh, I want to ask him that he can accept me as a student. But I'm not alone with him. I want to be private with him. So let me come back tomorrow. And before I 
ask him, I will first ask some of my friends in ISKCON if I make the right decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went back to ISKCON, stayed overnight and asked four or five devotees who were all gurus, like Burijan Prabhu and Dadudas Prabhu and Ayodhya Pati. I asked them, I am uh, willing, I am desiring to learn everything about pure bhakti under the guidance of Srila Narayan Maharaj. What is your advice? And they uh, looked at me, Ayodhya Pati said, oh, he will make you cry the rest of your life. Then I felt like, wow, that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> then I went to the next one, Burijan Prabhu. And he said, he is just like Prabhupada. He said, we are also gurus. He said, but we have to convince someone. He, they have to follow six months, four regulative principles, chant 16 rounds. And even then, they have no faith in us. He said, we have to convince them to have faith in us. And even then, we cannot give them initiation. But Srila Narayan Maharaj, like Prabhupada, in a moment, he can instill faith in the heart of anyone. Yeah. So you're very lucky, he said, that you are taking shelter with Srila Narayan Maharaj. So I went back that next day to Srila Gurudev. And I waited outside his room till he came out. That was after 8 o'clock in the evening. And he was chanting a little bit, walking in the in the temple room. And then I went up to him and I paid my respects and I asked him, may I ask you any question? He said, yes. He said, um, I want to learn about pure bhakti. I said, will you accept me as your student? And he looked at me and he said, I don't know anything about pure bhakti, he says. <laughs> and then he said, I am old man and my English is not good. Then I said to him, I replied, I am convinced that you know everything about pure bhakti, I said. And I don't mind whatever language you speak. I don't see you as old man. Then he started to laugh. And then he said, come tomorrow morning, he says, yeah. <laughs> Then I thought, wow, tomorrow morning. Then I went to Vrinda and I said, I'm going to take initiation tomorrow morning. I said to her, yeah. Gurudev invited me to come and bring some, yeah, flowers, whatever was necessary. Then Vrinda said, oh, I said, if you want, you can join me. She said, oh, I'm not ready yet. She says, yeah. <laughs> I said, well, you have one night to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> So she also agreed, and the next morning we went to Srila Gurudev, but we had to go that day on Parikrama. So no, in the, not on Parikrama, there was a There was a festival, installation festival in Goku. Uh, Goku, there was some deities, they were destroyed and they had to be re in, uh, reinstalled. Installed, yeah. New so deities. We, we had to go there. So then finally in the afternoon, we were the two of us with Srila Gurudev, and he gave initiation and Diksha, everything, and that was very sweet. And then he told me, I want you to always be with me. Yeah. Wow. My hook or my crook, he says. Then I felt like, how does he read my heart? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I, felt, I felt overjoyed, overjoyed, really, that he was so kind to me. And from that moment onwards, yeah, we had one doubt, actually. He said, do you have any questions? Then we said, yeah, we have. One doubt I have, I told him, he said, please speak out. And I said, before we met you, uh, I was completely contemplating and meditating always on Srila Prabhupada, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. And he has completely occupied my heart. I said, but now I don't know what's happening. Since meeting you, I said, I don't know what to do now. Mm -hmm. So I have only one heart, and who should I give it to? Then Gurudev started laughing. Yeah. <laughs> he said, when we practice spiritual life, he said, and we meet one very beautiful devotee, and he completely captivates our hearts. He said, he occupies that heart completely. We are so lucky. But he said, what happens then? After that, we meet another beautiful, pure devotee, he said. And then when really we are practicing spiritual life, he said, then our heart becomes bigger. And we accommodate that pure devotee also. And he said, actually, spiritual life is such a thing that we will meet so many amazing personalities, he said. All our previous acharyas, he said, they are all waiting to come in your heart. He said. Yeah. 
simply hearing their glories and hearing the teachings, especially Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath and Sri Lehishpana Chakra Bhakti Thakur, Sri Bhakti Vinod Thakur, all these amazing personalities, they are alive, Gurudev says, they are not dead. And they want to be in your hearts, they want to be your friend and protect you, protect your bhakti and help you progress forever and end up in the spiritual realm, in yeah, the braja, what we call Raloka Aprakat, yeah, dimension where there is only yeah, pure, spontaneous, loving relationships with Sri Krishna. So when Gurudev says that then for Navadi Mandal and Braja Mandal and we start to Prabhuji, you're cutting off. Small room. We have some real estate. Yeah. We then we moved to Mathura. Are you, uh, you are cutting off in between. Yeah, Can you repeat the last yeah. part? Yeah. After that, okay, Vrinda wants to share a little bit. Come on, Vrinda. Yeah, just quickly, because, um, yeah, first time, and then Gurudev, and then he said, oh, she's my wife. And then he looked at me, Gurudev, you know, like this, and he said, ah, your wife? Yeah. You know, and he was looking like, no, you're not his wife, you're mine, you know. So I, I remember that look good if, you know, had to me that really I'm his, you know, I'm, I'm his position. And it's just a matter of time and he will catch me fully. So that was my, my first impression of Shiro Gurudev. <clears throat> and then uh, when I was in Mathura, actually it's interesting because I was so much, um, <clears throat> you know, I was... I was really in um, duality because when we were in ISKCON uh, all these 14 years, we were trained like, you know, you have to be loyal to Prabhupada, loyal to ISKCON. And going to Narayan Maharaj means, wow, my God, you're not loyal to Prabhupada nor to ISKCON anymore. So that was such a big issue for me because I really wanted to be loyal to Prabhupada. I indebted everything to him. So I remember um, that year in 93, just before we got the initiation, I went to Prabhupada Samadhi in Krishna Mandir. And I was sitting there and I was praying to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, you know, I want to actually, I, I want a living guru, you know, and, and I want no one else but you, but what to do? I met Narayan Raj and now, is he okay? What do you, th please, you know, what, what should I do? And then I was sitting and praying to Prabhupada and then suddenly, the Pujari stand, stood in front of me with a garland from Srila Prabhupada's Muti. And then he said, oh, this is for you, from Srila Prabhupada. So he gave me that garland while I was praying. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, my God, that sounds like he's approving. <laughs> but I wanted to be sure, of course. And then I went outside. I was really excited. And the first person I bumped into was Shamrani. Oh, wow. Shamrani Didi. So I went I said, Shamrani. On my, uh, Yadurani at that time, uh, I said, you know, I, I, I was praying to Prabhupada and I got this garland and, and uh, so what do you think? Is it yes or no? Is it? <laughs> she says, of course, it's, it's whatever you pray, it, it's approved. And then she said, by the way, what were you praying? And I said, well, I met Narayan Raj and um, I, I'm thinking, considering to take shelter of him. I want to go to Mathura, I'm invited to go for the Padikrama. And then she said, oh, you said, don't delay. You should go at once, go there, but don't tell anyone I told you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I went to Mathura before he came. Yeah. And then he came from Holland <laughs> and I was there in the mud and joined the Padikrama. So that was so beautiful, 93. That was our first Rajivanda Padikrama. We had only two buses, very, very nice. And Guide was sitting in the ladies bus because he loved all these bridge bus kirtans from the ladies. Mm -hmm. And we had so many beautiful stories. I, I mean, that goes on and on. But that first time when we met Gurudev, we were just a few of us in the mat. And then he gave us darshans and everything was in Hindi. That was for me, 
uh, not so easy to understand because I didn't know Hindi. So I was clinging to Umadidi. Umadidi, what did he say? What did he say? And Umadidi was so kind to me, explaining everything in Hindi, uh, in English to me. And uh, so it was such a beautiful year, that first year of Parikrama. And then I stayed over winter while he went back to uh, Holland uh, till Navdi Parikrama. And um, so let's continue from there. Mm. Very nice. <laughs> yes, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, so, so many things happened when I start thinking about it. Oh, wait a minute, that's important because then um, we got initiation. I was also, so then before initiation, I was dreaming again about Prabhupada and Gurudev, and both came in my dream. And first Gurudev came, then Prabhupada, then Gurudev and Prabhupada, and then together, and then together in my dream, they had a big smile from ear to ear. And they both put their hands like this. Oh, together, huh? Okay. Whoever wants to convince me I'm not loyal anymore. But I think this is really true. And then I went to Gurudev. And then I said, Gurudev, can I still do... Uh, I, I noticed that we don't do Prabhupada via uh, Guru Puja. Because in ISKCON, 7 o'clock is always Guru Puja to Prabhupada. I said, can I still do Guru Puja to Prabhupada? And Gurudev said, yes, of course, you can do. And when you do, you should also invite me. And then I join <laughs> you. Like that. So he was so much encouraging us, you know, to be, you know, to still accept Prabhupada in our heart. And that Gurudev is helping us. And of course, Gurudev became our main guru. <laughs> but I, I very much appreciated how Gurudev was dealing with us to overcome this step from ISKCON to Godiamat. Yes, <laughs> Gurudev is such, I, I, if I just start thinking about it, how that is really Krishna's mercy, that someone comes in our life and completely captivates us and pulls us in, you know, one by one and closer and closer. When Gurudev said that, I want you to always be with me, that I was like over the moon. And I thought, but now how this is going to happen? And I... I'm like a, a person who likes to observe and to see. And when there is an opportunity, I go for it. Yeah. So here Gurudev is inviting me. And so I was thinking, how can I always be with him? Yeah. And what service can you And do? then I have to do some service. Uh, just being with him like a mosquito, that is, that is no use for that. Yeah. But I should be with him and render some service. So yeah. what service can I do? Then I was thinking, let me observe what is going on around him. And then I saw day and night brahmacharis, three, four, constantly. Cooking, one cooking, is, what is yes. managing, and then correspondence, everything. Always in the room with Gurudev. And I felt like, um, what if I do something that one of these brahmacharis is doing, that's not going to work because then that devotee doesn't have service anymore. So <laughs> I should do something which others are not doing. So I started to think, what is better? And in the meantime, Gurudev became more and more like he was seeing me. And, you know, he is such a, that is the quality of a real guru. He has a special interest in each and every one of us. You know? So he was seeing my endeavors and then I asked Srila Gurudev, he said, can I do any service for you? He said, yeah, what, what can you do? I said, well, only by your mercy I can do something, but I have some experience in book publishing and in book distribution. Oh, he said, then you can take full responsibility for my book publication for English. And I felt like, wow, this is like, now I have a responsibility. Eh? And coming from the background of ISKCON, it means when any authority gives you a responsibility, then everyone is going to take it very serious. So Gurudev said, you organize the book publishing, call them all together, and you organize it. So I asked all the devotees who were involved in English book publishing to sit together and let's make a plan how we can, you know, be more successful in publishing what help is necessary, anyhow, what we can do. <clears throat> when I called them all together in the room and then 
Frame Philosopher Bovici. Frame Philosopher Bovici, Tri, Tunga. Yeah. yeah, they did amazing service, all these devotees. So here I sit with them and I said, well, Sila Gurudev has told me to take responsibility for the book publication and distribution. And then they looked at me and they all started laughing, you know, and I thought, wow, wow what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> then I realized that no one is going to take you serious here in this Sangha unless you have a personal relationship with them. Yeah. Because they all have that with Sila Gurudev and Gurudev tells them, you translate this book, you publish this book. And it was really like that. And I was later on observing, sometimes Gurudev would tell the devotees, yeah, the same instruction, what can you do? And the devotees, oh, I can translate from Hindi to, okay, you translate Manu Shiksha. Then he comes out of the room and says, Gurudev just gave me the order to translate Manu Shiksha in English. And then five hours later, another devotee comes and, and Gurudev asking, uh, so can you do some service for me? Yes, what can you do? I can translate from Hindi to, and then you do Manu Shiksha, it's fully, you are fully responsible. So this devotee comes out of the room, he says, Gurudev gave me the order, I have to translate Manu Shiksha in English. Whereas the other devotee had just received the same order five hours earlier. <laughs> so what Gurudev, Gurudev really wanted us to learn to adjust with each other and cooperate and be united with love and affection. That was one of his main, if not, I would say, his second most important desire. And many times I see that devotees do not understand how to, up, how to apply this. How can we be united with love and affection? Just saying that is like very easy. Oh, let's all be united with love and affection. Mm -hmm. But really it requires much more because bhakti is a process that requires cultivation dedication, commitment. So if we want to be united, we need to learn with commitment to how to communicate with each other, how to understand each other, how to support each other, and how to accept each other, even though we are not perfect. Yeah. We have sometimes, uh, we are a little afraid Yeah, that oh, if I check in with others, they find out that I have so many shortcomings but we should feel that we have to, for Gurudev's pleasure, learn to be <coughs> with each other, support each other, no matter what it takes and be committed. So Gurudev taught all these beautiful lessons yeah, from the beginning. And in the meantime, I was still not completely satisfied because I felt Gurudev wants me to be with him 24 hours. So I'm not there yet. How am I going to get there? <laughs> then I was observing and I asked the devotees, did any one of you ever invite Srila Gurudev to go to Western countries? Then the devotees replied, the English devotees, yes, we, invite, we invited him, but we cannot really get anything together. We are not so expert. And he has actually, he said he would like to come once at least because Srila Prabhupada has invited him but we never got together. Then I asked the ISKCON leaders who were coming to Srila Gurudeva at that time, Tamo Krishnamaras and others. I asked him, did you ever invite Srila Narayan Maras to come to the Western countries? And they said, yes, we did. But I said, but what, yeah, what happened? Oh, we made a big blunder mistake. They said, we were so much eager to invite him to visit the ISKCON temples everywhere in the world and see what glories Srila Prabhupada has established by presenting the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and have him help all the devotees. But we made such a mistake. I said, what mistake did you make? He said, well, we told him that he cannot speak about Guru Tattva and Jiva Tattva. Yeah. Unless he accepts what the GBC has decided. And then Srila Narayimunas became so angry with us, he told us to go out of the room and never show our face again anymore. So luckily we asked forgiveness, is that then he has accepted us again. But when they presented that to Srila Gurudev, Gurudev said, I will only speak what I have learned from my Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I will not teach anything what you people have decided by majority vote. Yeah. I know what is Jiva Tattva, what is Guru Tattva. <laughs> so we never were able to invite him 
they said. Then I thought, wow, here is my golden chance. So I spoke because I had in the meantime discovered if anything you want to accomplish with Srila Gurudev, you need to connect with Madhav Maharaj. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That time he was Brahmachari because he was like so protective of Gurudev. And I thought if I can win Madhav Maharaj or Naveen Krishna, then Gurudev will agree. So <laughs> that was a good strategy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I spoke with Madhav Maharaj. I said, Maharaj, uh, Brahm, Prabhu. Prabhu. Uh, what do you think if I can invite you to Gurudev to come to the Western countries? I have some experience. I can organize things, programs in Europe for a few months, no problem. And uh, I saw um, that time Naveen Christopher, he was so enthusiastic. I, he, I think he had also a strong desire to come to the Western countries and to bring Sri Gurudev's Harikata and his amazing yeah, personality to come and help the devotees. So he was super enthusiastic. So then I went to Srila Gurudev and Madhav Maras, Navi Krishna Brahmachari backing me up. And I asked Gurudev that if you want, I can organize some uh, preaching programs in Europe. Yeah. America, America was already kind of waiting to jump in England also. So then Gurudev said, he looked at me, ah, he said, I really like to be in Braj, he said, but I can go for one time, he says, yeah. <laughs> then explain also that you were part of the wait, 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 wait. team of uh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe that It's coming, it's coming, yeah. So Gurudev said then to me, he said, I will go on one condition, he says, because he said, I don't know what is management, he said, all the problems, all the responsibilities are on your head, he says. Tickets, visas, programs, where I stay, how to go from one place to another. He said, I am only like a muti, he says. Wherever I go, I will just simply speak Harikata. Mm. I don't even want to know where we are going, he says. <laughs> you bring me wherever you want me to go, and I'll speak Harikata. Then I felt so overjoyed that now, Wow, it is going to happen that I can render some service. Yeah, you can now say that. Can be more, good and more close with Gurudev. Now, in the meantime, Brinda was typing in, in uh, Mathura, you were typing Hindi. So. Yeah, because I, I also thought I'm in the temple, I don't know what service I can do in Mathura because ladies are not so much, at that time, could not do so much service. And then uh, I looked at Shanti, and Shanti was already there. And I asked Shanti, what are you doing? She said, oh, I'm doing Hindi. And then I thought, oh my god, that's a good idea. If I learn how to help Gurudev with his publication in Hindi, then I have some service to do. And I can stay near the temple. So then I learned typing Hindi. And then the first book Gurudev gave me to type, to retype, actually, was the Jaiva Dharma. And wow, you did that Hindi typing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow, I, I didn't know that. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, by the mercy of Gurudev and Abhul Krishna Prabhu and uh, other devotees, I was trying to be a little helpful. <laughs> Anyhow, so go ahead. Yeah, at that time when we came in the month, there was a phone who didn't, and the phone didn't work uh, very, something. very well. Something. There was only one phone, landline. There was no computers. There was no. I remember that phone which was locked all the time. Yeah. <laughs> In the corner. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, room. so what yeah. happened? We we brought the first. Uh, there was not even a sewing machine. You know, in Europe we have these sewing machines that are outdated. So we brought some sewing machine and a small, the Type first writer. lab typewriter. We brought also a typewriter. There was no typewriter. Because because. Uh, because um, Gurudev was corresponding with the telegrams, you know, these blue, these blue letters. Aerogram. Aerogram, aerogram, yeah. right. Yeah. And then uh, the devotees were typing out, <laughs> so we gave it type. And then we brought the first like laptop computer, the small, you know, very small laptop. And Gurudev, wow! And then he said, "You can do my correspondence." And then we started from there, you know, to and then finally. More Westerners came, and although the mud was such a nice place, I cannot tell you how sweet and fragrant and so thick the atmosphere. But more Westerners came, and money came, and hand, 
you know, mobile phones and, you know, it's, it's just destroying bhakti. Yeah, I'm very sorry to say that, but it is true. Yeah. <clears throat> At that time, Gurudev would speak four times a day, yeah. Harikata, and everything was like you was like in the clouds, you know, you were not thinking about <laughs> this world anymore. And no connection with this world because no phone, no internet, nothing. And when all these things came, then so much, you know, obstacles are coming. Krishna, Unless we know how to use them, but those who can do that, they are rare. Yeah, it requires great expertise to do that. So when when now, what happened in 1996, there was the centennial of Srila Bhakti Vrata Sami Prabhupada. And I was in the committee from 1990, perhaps five, six years before they started already. Mm -hmm. I was one of the members of the committee. And there was several petals that were services for Srila Prabhupada's pleasure. And one of the petals of the Lotus was to make Sankirtan party that would travel all over the world and inspire all the devotees who had become weak, who had lost their inspiration for whatever reason, to make them again feel at home that they are with Prabhupada's family and they become inspired again. So that was my responsibility. And now what that, happened? Prabhu, that was re reuniting Prabhupada's family. Right. Exactly. Reuniting Prabhupada's family. One of the petals and also Padayatra, we did that also. Yeah, but it was that also was, one of the petals. Yeah, but this was the main petal yeah, that petals. I want to share with all of us yeah. today. Because then when Gurudev was ready to go, we were ready to go in 1996. That was yeah. Prabhupada's centennial year. And we were with the <coughs> Kirtan party. I mean, we had this Kirtan, Kirtanias, you know, uh, with us. Krishna Das Prabhu was the main Kirtanya. Yeah, although he didn't come on the first tour, but he came the second tour. And the first tour, <coughs> of course, Gurudev is the Kirtanya. Yeah, that is the topmost Kirtan that Gurudev presented. And how he inspired so many devotees to again be united and to follow Srila Prabhupada's teachings. It was amazing. So <coughs> after the first tour. So you thought that this is your service to Srila Prabhupada's yes. centennial? Uh, to actually have Gurudev go everywhere to inspire and reunite Prabhupada's family. And that's actually one of Gurudev's main purpose to reunite and to inspire Prabhupada's yes. disciples. That was there were four reasons you said why yeah, yeah. Gurudev wants so. to come. Because <laughs> don't jump too much. Goodness, helping me. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> How much time we have because it is... We only have enough time. We want to hear everything. It's only 9.15. We can go on till 10. <laughs> yes. But I'm just starting now, so I don't know if... if yeah. <laughs> where, where is the picture which you sent us? Uh, Gurudev is in a hammock and uh, you are looking Why? at... Oh, that was... Am I? Not oh, sure. Yeah. It's very sweet. He's sitting like this. Close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. So what happens in the meantime? Vrinda was uh, serving so nicely to Gurudev, and of course, she has her own personal relationship with Shiva Gurudev. And Gurudev, he was such an amazing, you know, father for all his children, but especially his daughters. Mm -hmm. He would always call them Kiara Beti, yeah, or darling daughter. So whenever Gurudev saw me, he was calling me Jamai, yeah. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Jamai Raja. <laughs> I'm son-in-law because yes. I'm married to his daughter. Yeah. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> so it became sweeter and sweeter in a very so loving great. way. And I think it's difficult, you know, because if you know anyone who knows me, they know that uh, really Brajanath, he, he very rarely shows emotions. Yeah. Probably in India, the position of Jamai is quite high. <laughs> like, is always worshipped, sort of. <laughs> so Gurudev gave you a very high position. <laughs> well, but uh, for me, you know, to come into, even in this life, I rarely show emotions. It is not my, although internally I have a lot of emotions, but I try to just process them privately and connect them. But externally, I am not so much of a, what is it, emotional person. Really, yeah. Now what happens, we were in 
now going with Srila Gurudev everywhere. Mm -hmm. Before you wait, 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 wait. <laughs> coming down from there. I'm coming down. We were going everywhere in Western <clears throat> but before we started, we actually choose a date. Gurudev, I don't know what happens, whether it was a TT or not, but we choose to travel on the 5th of May, arriving in Holland on the 5th of May. And that day is Liberation Day from the German occupation in the Second World War. So whole Holland is free. <coughs> they celebrate that we are liberated. So on that day, Gurudev arrived in Holland. Wow. <laughs> it's a nice Great. day. And what happened before that, before we left for, uh, for the West, we tried to get the visas. So we had visa in the meantime, the vote is from Canada, the vote is from America from England, everyone became super enthusiastic. And they said, please make a plan. Gurudev should come to America, to California, to Texas, Vishnu Prabhu, to Canada. And Gurudev now we became, wow. And at that time, they actually banned everyone from going to Srila Gurudev in 1996, the GBC of ISKCON. And Gurudev became like now on fire. He said, I have to jump. And he said, woke up the sleeping lion. Wow, they don't know what happened. I was sleeping very nicely, yeah, in my <laughs> But now they wake me up. Now yeah. I will go everywhere, he says. Lion, yeah. huh? So we tried to get the visas for Canada and America. That worked. I left all the papers with Sheila Gurudev. I went back to Holland to prepare. Then I got a phone call that England and Holland don't want to give visa. They have given visa to Gurudev England Embassy, but not to Naveen and to Pundarik, yeah, who were going to travel with us. And they were calling me on the phone, oh, what happened, what happened, and what to do, what to do. Then I said, don't worry, I will come back to India and I will speak with them and make sure that they should not have any reason to object that you should get visa. So I came back to India and then uh, we went again to the embassy of England and Holland and I put myself forward as a guarantee and and then what happened they had now a proper interview with someone who was able to understand they could speak in English and they could convince them in a proper way that it was impossible for Srila Gurudev to go without them so then they got the visa and now we were all set to go so in Matura on the 4th of May, we were ready. Mr. Somnath had sent his car, a Tata station car, to pick up Gurudev. Gurudev had no car, nothing, even up to 2004 or so. Or no, Dear Krishna had a small car. Yeah, he gave a small car, Dear Krishna. He didn't, didn't have his own car. That was no, Dear Krishna's, Krishna's car. car. Yes, yes, he didn't he have his own car. He had his own car until yes. 2004 or 2005 when we bought <clears> it. <throat> A car, yeah. So now Mr. Solna sent the car and the driver. So after lunch, we go in the car, 4th of May. And three of us, Pundarik had gone ahead already, our luggage in the back. And then Gurudev said to me, you sit in the front next to the driver and I sit in the back with Naveen. And I was thinking what uh, Gurudev, you should sit in the front because the most important person, that is what we learn in Europe, eh? they should sit in the front. In India, it is a little different maybe, but I wasn't aware of that. But still, I thought that uh, why Gurudev should sit in the back. But anyhow, I obeyed and I sat in the front. Then we drove off. And as soon as we were on the highway, the Agra Delhi highway, I looked in the back and Gurudev was sleeping on the lap of Madhav Maras. And that was such a sweet view and, and observation that I thought, wow, it's like, <laughs> so sweet to be with, you know, and I was still kind of, you know, my, what was it, reserved, I had my reservation because it's still, I wasn't like fully opening up yet, but I was hopeful that now it's really going to happen. So good at sleeping very nicely. After about 20, 30 minutes, he woke up and then he said so we said brajanat now what are we going to do we're going to go to western countries he said and we're going to do four things he said i remember that he said the first thing i want to go to all the places who they said where Srila bhakti Vedanta sami maharas had placed his lotus feet 
I want to go there and roll in the dust of his lotus feet and take his mercy. Because without his mercy, he said, no one can be successful in Rachar in Western countries. If anyone comes to the West, he says, and does not honor Srila Bhakti Vedanta Sami Prabhupada, they can never be successful in Prachar. He is the, what is it, Senapati, the general who has opened the whole field of Western preaching. And his ideas, his approach is ideally set. He oftentimes mentioned that. And he mentioned that in the end, when we were with Srila Gurudev and he started his own mission, he said, I want that we should be just like Iskon, he said. There should be a GBC, like Iskon, he said. But one thing we should not do. He said, we should not control anyone by administration. He said, we should control everyone by love and affection, he said. That is the only difference that I want, he said. Just like Iskon, we should preach all over the world in an organized way. All should be united and there should be a body. And under that body, all gurus who want to give initiation, they should obey that body, he said. There is no such thing, he said, that we can be independent yeah, from each other. We should be like under an umbrella and take always the help of the previous acharyas. And any ideal Vaishnavas that are present, involve them in our mission. So like that, it was Sri Gurudev's desire that whatever we were going to do in the West, yeah, it should be done under the guidance of Srila Bhakti Vedanta Sami Prabhupada. So he said the first thing, go to all the places where Srila Bhakti Vedanta Sami Prabhupada had placed his lotus feet. I will go there and roll in the dust, smear it all over my body and ask his mercy. Yeah, That is what I want. The second thing he said, all the devotees who have become weak, who have lost their enthusiasm, for whatever reason, I want to again give them inspiration. And they should again be inspired and united with each other in the service of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he said, the third thing that I want to do, is that wherever we go, in any place in the world, we may be in any one zone, that is, is has so many zones. I want to respect the devotees who are taking responsibility there. Whether they like me or not, he said, I will respect them. This is the third thing that I'm going to do. And he said, and the fourth thing that I want to do, he said, I want to laugh a lot, he says. Yeah. <laughs> he was very fond of laughing, Gurudev. He said, this is part of bhakti. In the spiritual world also, that is, those who are experts at making Krishna laugh, especially Sakas, but also Gopis, especially Fishakas. He is very expert in making. Prabhuji, laugh. There, there is a video where you are making him laugh so much. Radhika shared that video, remember? Yes. <laughs> Talking about the bald head and <laughs> you're laughing like anything. Yeah, so nice. Yeah. So loudly you're laughing. Yes. Yeah, so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. so these things. also there, I think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, these things Guru Dev said, these are the four things he wants to do. Mm. And now many things are happening. But still I want to know, Ajay Prabhu, we can continue another day or what is your plan? No, probably you can continue for another uh, half an hour. It's good. Okay, good. Yeah. Third thing you said is re uh, respect devotees, right? Yes. Okay. They may not be favorable, but I want to respect them. Guru oh, Dev. even if not favorable. Yeah. And it happened many times, you know, that devotees were not favorable to watch Srila Gurudev. Mm -hmm. And then Gurudev said, don't disrespect them. He said, they are our family. They may say anything about me, he said, but I never think that they are criticizing me. They are like my children, he says. Yeah. <laughs> like when you have a child, Diapers. that Arjai Prabhu knows that very well, <laughs> that when they're very small, they pass urine and stool everywhere over your dhoti and saris and yes. father and mother they never think oh the child is bad yeah <laughs> so what so they've said whatever they do whatever they say i see them like small babies yeah <laughs> i want that they should learn how to yeah respect and understand what is bhakti really so i 
never take their own, and you should not make any criticism of them, Guru Dev said. They are our family members. So this is a very deep lesson, which again, I can just contest and you know share with all of you. As much as we develop our own Krishna consciousness, we will be able to respect all living entities, whether they are inimical or they are favorable. Yeah. It is not easy, but it is. this is what Mahaprabhu is teaching us. Yeah. The more we learn to be connected with Sri Krishna by Harina, by especially the shelter of Sri Guru, and knowing that we are not this physical body, that we are eternal servant of our Gurudev, praying and meditating like this, yeah, feeling that, oh, I am such a fortunate soul. Yeah, and I am really, although I'm very insignificant, I am the most fortunate because Gurudev is my friend, Krishna is my friend, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, they are my friend, they are my family members. If someone doesn't respect me, it is not that I can, I should become upset with them. There must be a reason for that. Maybe my previous activities, or maybe that person is not in balance within themselves, but I should still respect that person. That is a very important lesson. Otherwise, we cannot chant the holy names. Yeah. So if I develop my own Krishna consciousness, automatically, that is what Gurudev teaching here, I will be able to respect all and overlook their shortcomings or anything that they are not maybe expert at don't judge them and don't criticize them or disrespect them hospital. hospital so now we are going in the airplane in the night yeah the fourth, <laughs> the fourth of may we leave early morning like just after midnight and we arrive at seven o'clock in the morning in holland so on the way when we were in the airplane, Madhav Maras, Navin Krishna Brahmachari, he is expert cook. Maybe some of you don't know that, but he can make anything. And it it's good that I've told, told to Madhav Maras and myself, he said, Brajanath, he cannot cook at all. He said, if he boils water, it will be burned. He said. <laughs> and Madhav Maras, he said, even if he cooks stones, it will taste nicely, he says. Uh. <laughs> so Madhav Maras, this time, Naveen Krishna Brahmachari, he had made some very nice dry kitri oh, so with good. tomato chutney. Uh. That is Gurudev's favorite for traveling. So we so had hot good. pot. That time, all these things were allowed still. We could take all these things on the plane. Nowadays, you cannot do that anymore. Yeah. Unless you have a baby. But anyhow, Gurudev, we had a hot pot with dry kittery and nice tomato chutney. And we flew economy. That time I was not, yeah, it was the only f flight we took at economy. Yeah, but after that. Many years, actually. No, that was the only tour that after that Gurudev was traveling business class. So now in economy, but what we did, we made sure that Gurudev had three chairs so that he could lay, lay down, relax, yeah which was very nice. So now the time for prasada was starting on the plane and Madhav Maras was serving dry kitri with tomato chutney with dates and tomato, very nice. And then what happened? The attendants in the plane, they were like uh, looking and smelling <laughs> and smelling and they were looking and what is this, what is this? And then one of the attendants went to the pilot and said to the pilot, you must come. There is one Indian family and I don't know what they are eating, but it, it's such a nice fragrance. <laughs> so the pilot came, oh. then <clears throat> KLM was it? KLM, yeah. And then they were asking, well, what is it what you are eating? And then I was replying to them, well, this is our own home cooking. And it is, it is not just ordinary food. I said, it is very, very special. Yeah. And they said, wow. And then I said, would you like to taste something? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So then <laughs> distributed some Mahaprasadam from Gurudev to them. Uh, they were so overwhelmed, yeah. This happened many times, you know, when we were on the flights and sometimes even flight yeah. attendants, one time they even took initiation. They were so... Yes, I heard that. 
so <laughs> impressed by Srila Gurudev that they were already vegetarian and they were starting to chant now. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. nice. so arriving in Holland, seven o'clock in the morning. In the meantime, in Holland, the news was already spreading because I was a little, not famous, famous, but everybody knew me uh, because of my, you know, so my nature. I know you were his first. No, but I was also uh, in Namhata. So many devotees came to the airport, about 30 devotees. Actually, the, the day before, Gurudev called me and then he said, How are you doing? And I said, Oh, Gurudev, we are preparing everything and we are eagerly waiting for you to come uh, and to bless our, the country and bless our house. Because at mm -hmm. that time, we had our own house. And interesting enough, um, in 93, when we met Gurudev, I was chanting in that house. We, we had a house. And I thought, oh, if Gurudev comes, if he would come in 93, there was not even a thought of Gurudev coming to the West. I thought, if he would come, he would stay in that room. I make a bed like him, and like the same bed as he has now. And then we will have Harikata there and this and that. And I was kind of daydreaming. Yeah. you know, about Gurudev coming to this place. Mm -hmm. And then three years later, he did come to that place. You can see how strong and, yeah. um, you know, <coughs> that Gurudev fulfills all desires, yeah. you know. So he called me this uh, day before and he said, so how is everything? I said, Gurudev, we're preparing everything and we are eagerly waiting to receive you in the airport. And he said, who's there? He said, I don't know anyone. He said, I only know Rajanath. Gopinath, Tungavija, and yourself. Who else is there? I said, oh, there's so many. So when <laughs> Gurudev came, he was so surprised to see so many devotees chanting. And like you know, in the airport at that time, we still could chant and make a big kirtan. Yeah. And I remember when he came down, he was so happy, so pleased. And then we got him in the car in Gopinath's um, Chrysler, he had a very special car at that time. That was a, like a, a station car, wasn't it? Yeah, a Chrysler it was an uh, American import car. <laughs> and it was red, red velvet um, cloth, you know, oh. for the chairs, and it looks really fussy and fussy. So he, he went to that car compared to the cars at that time in India. Mm -hmm. And then um, Gopinath, right? Gopinath drove him to our place. And I remember. And at that time, there was a beautiful season for roses. So Tunga Vijay and myself, we collected roses from the rose farmers. And we had three garbage big bags full of roses. And then uh, we made a whole carpet of flower petals from the, from the parking lot to the front door. Wow. So all rose, 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 rose petals. <laughs> beautiful. <clears throat> and, uh, and then I remember when Gurudev came in, he sat down and he was greeting the deities. And that first talk, it's not transcribed, and I do have the copy. It's not a very good recording. But the first talk Gurudev gave, he was actually breaking out. Uh, he was so moved. And he, he was saying that actually by the mercy of my Srila Gurudev, and Srila Prabhupada, I came here. And he was thinking how Srila Prabhupada came by steamer. He had no money, only 40 rupees. And he came to a country where no one was there. Just one person, I think, sent someone to send him to a family who was not even vegetarian. And in this condition, Prabhupada came all alone to the West to save the world. And Gurudev said, I came in this way and so many devotees were waiting for me. And he said, this is just the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and my Gurudev. You know, and he started actually crying. When you hear this recording, he broke up really, isn't it? Yeah. That? Yeah. yeah, it was very special. And we actually had a house in the middle of nowhere. After spending many years in Iskon in the temple, I told Vrinda, this is not working anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move out. And somehow or other, we got a very nice house by Krishna's mercy. Uh, it's a whole story, but it was in we the middle. We had no money, even nothing. We had nothing, <laughs> but uh, anyhow, we got it. Uh, somebody helped us out and we rented it and we bought it with a 100% mortgage. It was in the middle of nowhere and there was a nice little 
Pukur with swans and peacocks and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, and there were cows everywhere around. Yeah, yeah that's why he said uh, that's holy land. Yeah, yeah. I just heard today only his lecture is saying there are cows everywhere and it's not holy land, it's holy land. Yeah, yeah because when Goide went for the walk, it was so green, so many flowers. And yeah. then cows, they were, because our neighbor had cows and they were very, they were not used to people. But when Goide came, I remember the cows were running towards Whoa. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And woo, woo, mooing like this, and he was like, "Wow, so fatty!" And then he asked, "How much kilo?" He said, "Kilo, right? Yeah. Liter, not liter. How yeah. much kilo milk they give?" And then we said, "Like forty kilo per cow." He says, mm -hmm. "Forty kilo per cow?" Not everyone. But not some, everyone, but some, some of them. Yeah. So he was really impressed with the black, white Dutch yeah. cows. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ramananda, you were there at the airport at that time? No? No. Uh, no. Your father was there, I think. Your father. Also, no, also not there. The next time, when he came back from America, I think, then, yeah. then they came. Yeah. So then what happened, uh, like in the airport, 30 devotees, and Gurudev was crying when he saw that. He couldn't believe it, you know. So then coming in our home, which we, we tried to sell the building for a few years, but it didn't work. So now we understood it had to be for Sita Gurudev's programs. Yeah. The nice guest room also and guest facilities. So all the devotees stayed with us, about 20 or so. No more. 20, well, 30. No, no, no. no, oh, no, 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 no. Place 20 left. stayed with us and there were a lot of visitors. Yeah. Oh, really? So then so many people came and visiting Prabhupada disciples and other devotees who had been practicing Krishna Bhakti for many years, but no guru. And uh, yeah, within the moments, they all wanted to take initiation from Sri Gurudev. Mm -hmm. About 35, yeah, within three days, can you believe? Wow. <laughs> and then, uh, now the problem was, we had some malas from India, but they were shipped to England, so we had no malas. Oh. <laughs> and I said, okay, let's make some arrangement with ISKCON because they have a shop and in the shop you can buy malas. But of course, if I call them, they may have a problem. So I asked my friend to call them and ask them to select 35 malas. <coughs> Anyhow, they found out that it was for me, for Srila Gurudev. And then they said, oh, we have to have a meeting with the GBC or the local management. <laughs> Then I called them, I said, well, what's your problem? We are paying the same money that everybody else is paying. Yeah, yeah. That's, what's your problem? Anyhow, somehow or other we got malas the next day from, from, in, from an Indian any shop. Indian shop. And finally, Iskon also agreed. So we got the malas. And then it was a little bit of a, how to do the fire yagya. It was all improvising, but it was very nicely done. We didn't have grains, so we, got the oatmeal from the shop yeah <laughs> crunchy crunchy oatmeal. yeah and we had uh, an open fire in the in the house open wood fire open wood fire so that was like the fire pit <laughs> the yagya pit and everyone throwing the oatmeal <laughs> in there <laughs> and then they all did parikram around the house four or five times and all were initiated nice <laughs> and gurudev was really he was so happy and we went in the morning, in the evening, throughout Holland to so many places to do programs. And I didn't know that Gurudev was like, you know, his physical health, there was some restrictions for his heart. So sometimes we had three, three programs a day. And he, Gurudev went all the time. And, he, he but then he to... asked me one evening, he said, please try to do only two programs a day, he says. Because <laughs> driving everywhere and then going to another, so many devotees who wanted to receive Gurudev and mm. that's really, and also places. So that was a real beautiful experience. So he stayed for 10 days in Holland and then uh, that was very successful. Yeah, then, I, I also was a little anxiety for my parents because my parents knew the previous Guru who was, um, nice person but they didn't like him so much so i was thinking now what to do because i have another new guru 
And uh, so I told them that please come and visit uh, my, my good day or my spiritual teacher, I was saying like this. And then, um, so I thought, okay, I hope everything goes well and I hope they like him. And then, so the early morning, it was Mother's Day, that's in May also. And Mother's Day is a special day in Europe. It, um, that the ladies uh, who are mothers, they have a break. They don't need to do anything. They don't, they can just stay on the bed and they will be served that day. Nice. So early morning, I came to Gurudev and gave him some roses. I said, good day, this is for you. He said, oh, very nice. I said, today is Mother's Day. And he says, oh, what does it mean? I said, well, that means that today you don't need to do anything. You just relax and then you can, you can just be served. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, so that's the Mother's Day ritual. And I said, you are my mother, my father, you have everything to me, so that's for you. So then later my mother came and my father and then when he saw my parents and Prajina Prabhu introduced, oh, these are the parents of Brinda Devi. And then he said, oh, and then he gave a garland. He just got a garland from someone, a beautiful rose garland. And he gave it to my mother. And he said, this is for you because it's Mother's Day. <laughs> and you are my mother. Oh, wow. <laughs> and you're my mother. And my mother really at the, at the spot, she melted at the spot. And she, she felt so charmed by him. And then later on, she said that, oh, uh, you know, I, she kept the garland and, and it was already dried up. And she said, I, I just was so enchanted because she also had a special dress she made herself, like an Indian dress. And then he gave another compliment. And then he said to her, oh, you have such a beautiful dress. <laughs> and then my mother was like, oh, you like my dress? Like a little girl in front of him spinning around. Oh, you like my dress? <laughs> and then he gave a big hug to my father. And my father is not at all this type of hug person. So but he was so charmed. So all my anxiety was just gone about my parents because completely good if charmed and at the spot. <laughs> and actually Vrinda's mother came after this many times to India. To Five Pari times. She came for Parikrama. Parikrama. Five you times. To and meet Gurudev? Huh? Yeah, he he came India to meet Gurudev again? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Five times. Oh. Many times in festivals. He really got charmed, eh? Whenever yeah. Gurudev came to Holland or Italy, my mother came and then later he gave her also initiation and he oh. gave her the name Nilam. Oh, wow. Nilam. And also <laughs> my sister, she also got initiation, Hemalata. That's her name. So I was very blessed. And yeah, so nice. continue. So now we stop here today because now we are going to England. Yeah. <laughs> and that is a whole new development in England. We can do another night, another evening, Adhyay Prabhu. Let me go. If you're tired, okay, Prabhuji, the, but we are uh, okay. But if you want to stop here, it's your wish. Cross the canal, otherwise you stay in Holland. At least go to England. No, 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 no. We should now no. stay and the next time we arrive in England. <clears throat> we have to stay in Holland so long. That's good. Yeah, okay. that's a good place. <laughs> good, they've always said when you do the Bandan Lila, don't keep uh, Krishna bind up, you know, by Mother Yashoda. <laughs> Yeah, release him at least. Huh? <laughs> release him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you all for being there tonight. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Didi. It was really, really very nice. And we could go on and on like this, uh, hearing such sweet uh, uh, Gurudev's Katha. And I noted down some points which you spoke. And uh, first thing you said, First, become Krishna consciousness. It really touched my heart. Mm. Like Gurudev always tells us to be Krishna conscious first, ourselves. Mm. And then you do whatever you have to do. Then you talked about his books. And then you are so much interested in the pure bhakti, which is your search for pure bhakti. And uh, one very interesting thing which you said, which uh, I really loved was, previous acharyas are waiting to come into our heart. Mm and to protect our bhakti. This is really, really interesting, uh, which you said. So we hope that someday all acharyas will come into our heart and protect our bhakti. And our heart, really said, our heart will expand like a lotus. 
Yes. And we accept Sri Guru in our heart, then the whole parampara wants to be in our heart. Yes. And our heart will expand. That's a very, very beautiful thought. And fifth May, you said uh, Gurudev came on Liberation Day and he liberated everybody. Everyone was so happy and joyful. So what a divine arrangement for Gurudev. Uh, beautiful. <laughs> and then you said about four points. Uh, like he wanted to roll into Swami, all the places where Swami Maharaj went. So much <laughs> respect for previous Acharyas. Only a Mahabhagavat can uh, show like this. Then uh, you said about... Gurudev ordered us to be like a scorn, except that we should be controlled by love and affection. I hope this happens, and uh, I hope uh, we are all under one umbrella all the time, <clears throat> and we are all controlled by love and affection, not by administration. Yes. Yeah, very important point, Prabhuji. And then respect devotees, even if they are not favorable. Yes, I think we should all try to follow this. I will try to follow it myself personally if I can, uh, to my best of my ability. Even if the devotees are not favorable, if, even if they are not good to you, you should try to respect them. This is what Gurudev said. And uh, lastly, and most important also, laugh a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then he said about mercy of Prabhupada. Uh, Gurudev acknowledged mercy of Prabhupada. And Gurudev, for your first meeting, you described so nicely that he started crying. And this is how Mahabhagavad are. They're always so, so thankful to their Guru Varga and mm -hmm. Prabhupada. I hope we can also be like this, uh, how our Gurudev has shown us, shown us the way. Thank you so much, Didi. Thank Hi. you so much, Prabhuji. It was really Thank very nice you. having you here. Prabhu. And reminding us of Gurudev all the while. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful services also. And uh, we hope to follow your footsteps and we, also, we should get some anubhuti of what you have. I know you have a lot more things to say. We will call you one another day also. Yeah, call any other day. And don't follow our, at least don't follow my footsteps, but follow mm -hmm. Gurudev's footsteps. Yeah. No, no, no. You are also, you are part of Gurudev. You are right with him all the time. You are like a shadow. I need your support and your friendship. Yeah. Otherwise, we cannot in any way yeah, be with Shiva Gurudev. We need to be with each other united. Yes. I so, hope we all stay together and we are able to follow his teachings and we are able to take his name far and wide to the whole world so that everybody knows him through his books and lectures. So we are already doing it and uh, we all should try to help all the devotees who are doing it and we should try to do it ourselves. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you so Thanks much. Thank everyone for uh, allowing us to say a few things. Thank you. And tomorrow we are going to have the same program and we will have a, a family member of uh, Somnath Prabhu, I think uh, Didi, Madhurika Didi and many more, two, three more people will come. Oh, it will be interesting talk tomorrow also. Yes. So join us at the same time and I thank all the listeners who are who have joined us today. Thank you so much for being there. Thank you. Is it, uh, Jai Prabhu, is it always in English or is it in Hindi mostly? This is, uh, uh, Prabhuji, all, mostly in Hindi, but if we have an English speaker, then we speak in English. Okay. Like today you are English, so we have to speak in English. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but if somebody can speak Hindi, we would prefer to be in Hindi, generally. I understand. Yeah, yeah so we do every Monday to Friday. It's yeah. been three months now and it's been going on. Oh, beautiful. Every day. Right. So after dinner time, every day, everybody sits and get immersed in thoughts of Gurudev. Nice. So it's been really are, nice, yes. Are you doing a recording also? Yes, we are recording and it's live on Facebook. You can, I'll send you a link, you can watch it again. Okay. No, yeah, but I mean, okay. it's nice to um, save all these memories. It's beautiful. Yes, yes. And they are going to be archived, I've heard. But anyways, it is there on the Facebook forever. Yeah. It's all limited, eh? Guidish glories. <laughs> yes, yes. Beautiful. All Guidish mercy and his glories. Yeah. Rajnath Prabhu Ki Jai. Rajnath Prabhu Ki Jai. 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 Jai